Hello friends, welcome back to the Dan Mabry Project. Uh, this episode is with Grant Terry. Grant Terry is a musician from Ruston, Louisiana. And I only met Grant a couple days ago, um, but he was kind enough to say that he wanted to come on the podcast, so we made it happen. Um, this podcast happened at Ruston Artisans, which is a building downtown Ruston, Louisiana that highlights local artists, and they put on events and other things there. So I want to say thank you to them and to Ashley Greer for helping us get in there and, and having a space to do this. Uh, like I said, Grant's from the Ruston, Louisiana area, but he's based in Nashville now and uh, traveling the country playing his music. Uh, in this podcast, we talk a lot about how we got into music and and some of uh, you know the trials and tribulations of, of traveling alone and and uh, going on tour alone and uh, you know some of the the ways he has to hustle to make money in between jobs or gigs and um, just really enjoyed getting to to pick his brain and uh, see how he operates and uh, you know swap some stories along the way. Uh, if you're new to this podcast, um, I recently quit my job and sold my home to fully pursue this podcast and videography. So if you or someone you know has some videography opportunities, I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram at dan.mabry. Um, if you want to support this podcast, this is an ad-free podcast. Um, it costs you nothing to listen to it, and if you find any enjoyment out of it and would like to uh, help help support the cause i do have a venmo account uh, i have a patreon account where you could uh, sign up to you know do as little as a dollar a month or you know as much as a uh, five dollars a month you know buy a cup of coffee or something for me once a month uh, all that's greatly appreciated if you don't feel like contributing financially totally understandable um i'd really just need you to subscribe to this youtube channel uh, it's super easy, costs you nothing, and it only benefits me. Uh, whenever I get to a thousand, I'll be monetized by YouTube. Um, another way to help is just to share this podcast on social media. Tell your friends about it, like it, um, and yeah, feel free to shoot me more guest recommendations. Uh, I'm always looking for people, and I'm about to start traveling around the country, hopefully. Um, so guests outside of Louisiana are not out of the question. Uh, y'all go support Grant. Look him up on Instagram at Grant Terry Music. Uh, he's all over Spotify and iTunes and YouTube as well. So make sure to look him up and see where he will be, his next gig will be, because he's always traveling and always playing music. So um, thanks for tuning in and appreciate all your support. I uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. jump right into Let's it. Let's do it. Uh, Grant Terry. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I met Grant like a week ago. Uh, at Sundown. At Sundown, yeah. yeah. The local uh, spot. Yeah, he, he had recognized the podcast and recognized me. And uh, I was like, I have to go meet Dan. I'm a huge fan already. Yeah, for sure. And like, <laughs> whenever we were talking, like I'd... I didn't like. I just wasn't thinking about the podcast, you know. I was like, and "This guy looks like the guy from the podcast yeah. I saw last week." Yeah, and then uh, Grant ended up messaging me. He was like, "Hey, man, if you know you need somebody, yeah. ho holler at me." Yeah, I'm glad. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you reached out because I, again, I just never thought about it again. Uh, uh, well, after after we left Sundown, I talked to some of your uh, friends that we're, we're sitting with, and they were yeah. like, "Yeah, man, this, this, you should you should." Reach out to him and say hello. I was like, I'd love to do his podcast. Yeah, I hope, I'm glad sure. that it worked out. So yeah, glad definitely. To be here. Thank you. Definitely. Um, so Grant's a musician. Uh, been a musician for a long time. Yeah, about a decade now. Which okay. Kind of crazy. And born and raised in Ruston. Born and raised in Ruston, and I live in Nashville, Tennessee now. But I travel around so much that my Nashville friends, you know, feel like I'm not there so much. But Fair that's enough. where all my stuff is in a room somewhere <laughs> in Nashville. 
<laughs> heard that. Yeah. Um, so I guess let's let's kind of start from the beginning. Yeah. Like when did you when did you pick up a guitar, or when did you start find you had some musical talent? Music kind of came late and surprisingly to me. I uh, I didn't really like listen to music growing up, or I didn't like have like instruments around the house or anything. And uh, I played baseball. Okay. With actual Michael Davis, who was on your podcast. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I, that's when I saw. So I played All baseball right. with Michael. That's um, growing up. And uh, and then I went to college and played baseball at this small college in East Texas called Northeast Texas. And uh, I bought a guitar going into my freshman year. And pretty quick, I was like, maybe I'm a songwriter. And I just didn't know it until just now. <laughs> and uh, after a little bit of like learning and <clears throat> trying to write my own songs, after a couple, you know, a little bit, I ended up, you know, moving to Nashville and traveling around and doing it. What position in baseball? I wasn't. Uh, outfielder. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So pretty speedy. Yeah, I know, not super fast, but I guess uh, you know, not 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 as fast as you would think. <laughs> I think I played more left out um, than, <laughs> than anything else. Fair like, enough. Fair in enough. college, at least. But it was a good time, and I learned a lot, and um, and I was excited though to find a new kind of passion. Yeah. I feel definitely. like with sports, you like you're so like built up to you're trained to work at a task until you get good at it. Yeah. And so I learned a lot about you know being disciplined and working hard at something. And then as I was getting older, I was like, well, this baseball is probably going to phase out soon just because these people are really good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I bought a guitar, and I was just like, man, this is, this is kind of a fun hobby and something interesting. And I think I just used all the things I learned in sports to, like, really, but, you know, try to get better at music. And, right. So. Yeah, I mean, you realize that practice was going to It's an hours. It's all an hours game. Yeah, you know? yeah. How many hours can you do something? Right. That's how good you'll be. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I know I've picked up a guitar before and tried to, tried to mess around with it. And, you know, it's like, oh, my fingers it are too your small fingers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get those calluses. Yeah, for up. sure. And the, the reaches and all that kind of yeah. stuff. It's get, crazy it's how hard it is at first. And then after a decade of doing it, it feels like walking. For sure, you know. I've uh, actually been talking to one of my friends who's a who's a very good guitar player, and he's been struggling with some other things in his life. And I'm like, like, dude, you know, you, you remember you didn't just like pick up and yeah, like it, it wasn't play a whole song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so many people that play guitar for like play half song. Like they're like, I know like five half songs. Like I can play <laughs> a verse and a chorus of like five songs. Yeah. And everyone's like, finish a song, bro. Finish a song. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, that, that kind of story of, of chasing other things and, and stumbling across music is, is not completely uncommon. Uh, I guess my thought goes to, like, I don't know, if you know, like Sturgill Simpson. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, he was just, like, working on the railroad and Gosh, make, so writing songs. And his wife is like, you know, you better go write some music and play music. And, and he just hit the road and didn't stop until yeah. people were like, oh, yeah, we like this. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. is that is that kind of what you did? You just kind of yeah. stayed local for a while? Yeah, I or? was here for <clears throat> about a, maybe a year or so, like traveling around in um, Louisiana and then some of Texas because I went to school there. And, and I was like hopping around between those places playing shows. And, and after like a year and a half um, of, you know, kind of being a starting musician in North Louisiana, I was going to Nashville in the summer and like recording up there and I'd come home and I would like, I was like, I got a CD now, you know, and I'd yeah. play little shows and, um, and then eventually after a while I was like, I need to go to Nashville and kind of get in the thick of it and like really, you know, get inspired and learn some things from people that are better than me. For know? sure. And so I went to Nashville and, <clears throat> and was still travel around a lot and, and been touring for quite some time, but um, Nashville is definitely a place that I would say um, I learned a lot of my songwriting chops because everyone is so talented there. Everyone, you know, in some way is better than you. you yeah, know? And so yeah. you can get like inspired or you can get scared. And I've, I've been a little bit of both over the years, but hopefully yeah, no I've doubt. stuck in there and kept yeah. going, you know. So has it always been a solo endeavor? Have you like yeah, brought I, in a band? I, I hire, you know, I've always been just a solo um, act, um, but I, I do hire a band sometimes for um, like if I'm opening up for the, a big enough artist, you know, I'll, I'll, invest in hiring some guys to play but right now it's just kind of easier to travel around solo and i've kind of really uh because i've been doing it for so, so long i feel like I, I put together a really good solo show yeah you know and so i really like traveling around and doing like the storyteller songwriter kind of shows but uh, i do like playing with a band when i you know when, when the time is right for sure yeah, for um sure. so you mentioned like you put together a good solo show do you like you repeat your show. I mean, obviously, sometimes yeah. I'm sure you do, but a lot of times, you know, a lot of times it's very like I'll start and end kind of with the same song, you right. know. And there's a few little on stage 
you know, banters that that I, that, I, that work or or, right. or or don't work that I don't use anymore. But yeah, I, I, I've definitely kind of crafted it, and it feels like kind of like a, a show where I have like my act together or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, it depends if I'm opening for someone that's like a thirty minute spot, or if I'm headlining, it's an hour, hour fifteen. Um, and some, I'll switch around. If I have a piano on stage, I'll go from guitar to piano and back and forth. And the more instruments on stage, even if it's just you, the more switching around you can do, the faster it makes the show feel like it went by. Yeah. And you want the audience to kind of be like, it's over now. You know? Oh, no. And so uh, if you can make the time feel like it's started. moving fast, yeah. it's a good show. But if they're like, oh, my God, this is taking forever, you've lost them. You That's know? an excellent point. And so I, you have I've to never like, thought about yeah, that. You have to keep them being like, no, we wanted one more song. Yeah. And the, But, you know, I've definitely played shows before where they were like, I could tell, like, I need to wrap this up. Right. And you kind of figure out how to keep them engaged and know when to let them go and not to keep them too long. Yeah, um, uh, that's all a, a trial and error. Yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah. Just have to learn. Yeah. And then sometimes you know you think you have it figured out and you don't. And you have to be like, all right, well, that didn't get them that time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get them that time. But it's it's really fun. And um, I also do a lot of songwriting for other people. At least I'm trying to get into it more. Okay. So I'm kind of doing like my career as an artist. Uh, I kind of see myself having two career paths. One as an artist, and then one as a writer. Um, and I want to write, you know, music in all different genres and for other people too, and uh, it's something I'm pursuing pretty hard right now too. So you mentioned like going to Nashville and getting in with some other songwriters. How yeah. does how do you go about that? You just like go knock on a door. Yeah, or? well, I'd, I'd been working up there <clears throat> through the out the summer for like the past two years before I moved there. So I'd made enough friends to where when I got there, I had a crew of people to hang out with, and and uh, I was already kind of aware of people that I wanted to work with, you know, and, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I kind of, you know, sought after some of my heroes in a way and, and okay. to, you know, work with them and kind of, you know, just started just like anything else, you know, just <clears throat> friendships or just shared uh, moments in time with people, you, you know, so until you have like shared experience with people, you can't really form a friendship. So I just go up, went up there and like hung out with peeps and yeah. found my crew. Yeah. You know, you just hustled, you know, hustled, you know? Yeah. Uh, Definitely. <clears throat> yeah, we were talking before. I, there's an article about you that was written earlier this year. It was talking about <laughs> you were an Uber driver for a while. And, yeah, there was, a, were, there was a moment <clears throat> about two or three years ago where I kind of came off the road for a second, and I was like, I'm going to stay in Nashville and, and write more. And I make my money touring mostly, you know, and so when I wasn't touring, I was like, I need to do something. So I, I, um, I started driving Uber, and I was driving this. Um, it was my grandmother's old car at the time. It was a Grand Marquis Mercury. Okay. So it was like classic and gangster at the right, same time. Right. You know, still a great Uber. Vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> People would get in the car and be like, "I've been arrested in a car like this." Go, is, this is, is this an undercover cop car? You know, and uh, it was fun. But uh, I would pick people up in Nashville for about a year, and I would drive when well, I was driving for Uber, and I met a lot of people and made a lot of uh, connections randomly enough doing that. Um, I would just pick people up and eventually they'd be like, so what do you do? You know, and a lot of times they'd, they'd be tourists and they're just like, you know, want that Nashville experience. Like, this is an Uber driver. I bet he does music. And so yeah. they'd start talking to me, you know. Yeah. And I would just wait, you know, wait for the golden opportunity to right. shove my music right down their ear holes. Yeah. You, and, were, uh, you I, were sitting there waiting to give them yeah, the Nashville there, experience. There, there's a couple people like, um, that it's not just Nashville, but they're kind of different places in the country that met me in Nashville driving Uber became fans and now they come out to shows and they're like they know me as their uber driver there's like a very small group of people that did for a year that would get in the car and, and now come out to shows but it's funny to play somewhere and be like bro you drove me uber i learned you i heard your song before it came out in uber and yeah like, that's so cool that is cool that's yeah. awesome oh no one last uber story um this is probably the coolest one i was uh, driving in nashville and i was picking up someone on music row kind of end of day 6 p.m 7 p.m and this guy got in the car his name was John Marks, and uh, I was like, hey, man, how you doing? Like, you know, and I knew that he picked up on Music Row that he was probably worked in music, so I was trying to, like, you know, what's going on, what you do? And uh, he was like, you know, I work for Spotify, and I was like, this is your moment, don't mess up, Yeah. you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so I was, like, I was like, hey, that's cool, man, you know, Spotify pays my cell phone bill every month. And he was like, <laughs> no way! He was like, what, what's your name? And... He starts playing my, his, my music in the back seat of his, on his phone. Like, and I was like, oh, I can just show it to you, man. And, um, and he ended up like, really, really liking it and um, gave me his email address and was like, email me. I'm gonna, you know, I can probably help you out. And, I was, and he, was, he turned out he was like the head of 
global country music Spotify playlisting, which wow. was you know a pretty huge title. And everyone in Nashville that works in the music scene, obviously, like takes us out to dinners and tries yeah. to show them their song and be yeah. like, hey, please play our artists, you know. And that's kind of what he was telling me. And he was like, you know, I go around and people play me the songs all day, and and I'll remember this one tonight when I when I go to bed. And that's I was like, that's so cool. And so he gave me his card and was like, email me. I email him. I hear nothing back. Six months later, I emailed him probably two or three times in those six months. Never heard anything back. One day I woke up and boom, he put one of my songs, my song called Malibu, on this country playlist, which I'm not necessarily, I, may, I definitely have some country influences, but I'm not, most people would say I'm not a country artist. Right. And I'm not aiming to be, but I do work in that field as a writer sometimes. And uh, he was just cool to throw my pop song on that country playlist. It yeah. made me really happy and probably pissed off a lot of country fans, which For is sure. pretty cool. But I, it helped kind of get that song off the ground and get that, that song going, which was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so, another... so Spotify, so Uber directly helped me connect to Spotify. <laughs> yeah. So you say that Spotify pays your cell phone bill. I'm assuming that's from the three million yeah. streams <laughs> yeah. that you oh, have. Yeah. That, yeah, that was cool. On the song Go. Yeah, luckily that song had taken off. And so when I met him, he was like, oh, he has some traction on Spotify. This is cool. And yeah. so then he helped me out with the other one. Yeah, that was really kind of wild when that happened. Um, that song Go came out in 2014 and didn't do anything for like a year. And I, and I kind of ran out of money. I put all my money into making this record. And, and by the time it came out, I didn't have much money to really market or promote it. And so I ended up having to, uh, I was like, I didn't know what to, what to do or how to promote this stuff. And randomly, like a year to the day that it came out, it just, Spotify just started, I guess, putting it in their Discover Weekly. And uh, people were liking it and saving it. And then, like, you know, it's that, that song also kind of started to relaunch my career in, in a way back in 2015, a year after it came out. And so I tell my friends all the time that put out music and they're like, oh, it's not t- sticking. I was like, well, dude, my biggest song did nothing for a year. Yeah. And now it's, you know, people kind of, a lot of people know me from that. So you never know when a song is going to take off. And just because it doesn't hit right away, it doesn't mean that, you know, it won't get picked up in a year or what. So that's yeah. kind of a, a little inspiring story that I tell For people. sure. And that... It, that go sounds a little different than some yeah, of your yeah, other stuff. Yeah, it's like an 80s pop jam. Yeah, a bit. yeah. I, um, each record has kind of sounded a little, a little bit different. Um, and even like on each record, there's I kind of go in and out of different genres, and that's just you know something I like to do. For sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> there's another band that I'm a big fan of that Ooh. changes genres every album. Oh yeah. Uh, they're called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I'm, I'm gonna have to check that out. <laughs> I've never heard of King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard, but yeah. the name will never leave my head. Now. Yeah, they're an Australian rock band, and uh, I mean, absolutely, completely changing gears every album. It's, oh wow. It's really interesting. That's they really put out like five cool. albums in 2015. Oh wow. Yeah. It That's was, awesome. It's pretty epic. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually kind of. I don't want to. Uh, say i don't know how much i can announce but i'm hopefully gearing up to release a lot of new music in 2020 and maybe like more music than i've ever released in a year wow um and i'm kind of been getting i've been stacking up songs over the past couple of years what i think to be my best work and um getting ready to, to you know start sharing it soon is this stuff you're already recording or, or? It's, yeah I've, I've been recording some stuff for the past i started recording in, in june a bit and recorded a bunch of songs and written a few new ones since then and kind of recording those and um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to release it because music, the landscape of music is changing so much of like, you know, I wrote an album, but no one's really putting out full albums. And so what's the best way to put it out? And, you know, and people, everyone has, you know, advice, like put it all out at once. And people are like, no, put them all out separately. And then yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. But uh, I have a bunch of songs, what I feel to be my best work. And I've been touring. If you come to a show, you've, you've heard a lot of new ones and you're like, when are they going to come out? When are they going to come out? Hopefully. 2020. Yeah. yeah. So you, you you have been, I guess you have been touring a while since the last album came out. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I've been I've been touring for pretty consistently for the past two years or so. And that's that's just a, again a solo endeavor. Solo traveling around by myself. Last year, I traveled around with um, I had a live painter that would travel around me and do live paintings. Miss Ashley. Green, yeah, Ashley for sure. Earlier, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, I was, I was doing music solo with music, but she came out and would do live paintings, and so that I guess it wasn't completely solo. I had she was around keeping me company, yeah. which was that was a really fun, um, fun year. Yeah. How did y'all link up? How did that idea come about? We met. Where did we meet? Did I bump into her at sundown, same place I met <laughs> okay, you. Fair enough. <laughs> and um, 
and I was like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I think we just connected. We're both, she, I was doing music and she was painting. And so right. we're like, oh, we're both artists in a way. That's really cool. And um, became friends. And first she was getting into photography. And she would she came to some shows and shot some um, some photos of some live shows. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, maybe you should come out and you know, kind of help tour manage and do some photos. And then um, we did a show together uh, at an art gallery where she did a live painting. And it went so well. We're like, why don't you just like do live paintings at all those shows that that, that you can, you know, or that that are long enough? Because she has to, it has to be like at least an hour long show to to finish her painting. So <clears throat> not every show, but um, for last year she came out and we went all over and we had a good time. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So and we would auction off our paintings at the end of the night. Oh, which was okay. really cool. And so it helped to make more money and. Um, it was it was a really cool deal, and people would get to take home like a little bit of the experience. Right? Yeah. I mean that that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, you 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 sold the show. Yeah. Like, so it was really really awesome, and we'll do more shows probably always. You know, um, she's doing a lot of murals right now, so we're not going out as much as we have been, but I'm sure we will always do every, You know, come back and do shows. That's yeah. so fun. Yeah. I saw she'd been working on some some big walls here in Russia. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. She's crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. She's she's doing great. Um, I guess a question that I have and, uh, just out of uh, ignorant to it, yeah. um, like you're traveling by yourself, you just bring your guitar or you got to bring mics and, um, a lot of times I'm just bringing my guitar and sometimes I'll, um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll travel around with an opener and so I'll bring someone out and they'll open up and so I'll maybe have some company on the road for a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm traveling around with just my guitar and usually all the venues that I'm playing for the most part now have setups you know but if, if i have sometimes i'm not above playing a, a venue or that where i need to bring some gear i'm not a, you know above playing a house show or a right. small coffee shop where i need some I'll, you know i'll play any room that people want to hear yeah you know, so have you ever done any busking i have yes i have that's a great question i've never okay so two or three years ago i moved to uh brooklyn for the summer okay um in new york and i've never really spent much time up there and I've never been anywhere big enough to busk to where it's like, oh, there's enough people or enough people that you don't know to, right, to right. feel confident enough to go out in strangers and start playing. Yeah, you don't really want to do it at the Peach yeah, Festival. Yeah, <laughs> but I went, I went to New York and I was recording my song Malibu, which ended up getting a lot of love on Spotify. But I went there to record that song and was kind of recording in New York for the first time. I, I record a lot in Nashville, but this was my first experience of going to New York. And on my days off of the studio, I would go and uh, I'd go to the subway and I would busk. And that's how I survived that summer in Brooklyn. I was like going up there, and on a, on a real, real shoestring type budget. And uh, my friend, of uh, mine, who was like driving me to the airport, and uh, he was from New York. He was like, "Dude, how are you gonna survive?" Like he knew how broke I was. Like, "How are you gonna survive up there?" I was like, "I don't know. I figure I'll just like figure it out, you know." And he was like, "Dude, you have to busk on the subway." He was like. It's like you. It's like you should give it a try. I bet you could make some money. And so, I tried it out, and um, and that's you know that's what I did. Yeah. It was really c cool, and I bumped into a few people that I that I knew while playing by busking in New York, which was crazy. They're like, Grant, are you okay? <laughs> like, what are you what are you doing? Awesome. Uh, which was really fun. It was like, oh man, I'm just I'm just sweating a lot yeah. and playing some tunes. You yeah. want to jam? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so is that like were you playing your own music? Are you doing covers? A little or? bit of both. You know, a lot of I, yeah. I would play. Um, I'd say, play I just, covers to grab attention. You know, I'd play yeah, some that's my what, songs. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I I can imagine that it would be difficult to get no. people's attention playing your own music yeah. initially. Yeah, it, you know, maybe it can be. And I I have uh, I have a good time uh, learning you know, my favorite songs. And so I don't get to play a lot of covers at my shows as much. And so that was a fun time to like, you know, yeah. learn some new songs and play some covers and yeah. of all different styles. Mm -hmm. It was fun. You could get goofy with it or yeah, whatever. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it was cool. Didn't have to be a serious thing. All yeah, the time. It, was a, it was a good, it was a good summer. And, and it also was, you know, busking is actually pretty fun. If you like playing music, you <laughs> just play music. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, doesn't matter where you are, yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, any any sketchy situations that came out of that? Not not maybe not from busking. Yeah. <laughs> not, maybe not from busking. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 nothing too crazy. Um, in that summer, but that was, it was a great time. And in Brooklyn, from that summer has kind of become a second home, and I go back pretty. I'm actually gonna go there. I'll be there on Monday next week. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Continuing on that question, like yeah. you had any like bad shows where things got they got weird or anything like that? 
Let's see. I'm sure I've played, like, I've had, like, shows be double booked where you show up and they're like, oh, sorry, like. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, someone else is playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you're like, well, I just drove all the way here. Right. And now i got to go home. Right. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's about as crazy as, as that gets. Yeah. You know. uh, so we talked about it at Sundown, and I guess that was kind of my question earlier, is, like, you, you said that you don't even own a car anymore. Like, yeah, I've, 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 I haven't had the Grand Marquis for almost a year now. Okay. Yeah, and I've, and I've been um, trying to see how long I can go without one. Yeah. Because, um, you know, when I'm in New York a lot, and people don't, it's not, like, convenient to have a car there. Right. In fact, when I would drive up there, I would get my car towed once. It was, that was a crazy story maybe that happened up there. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I haven't had a car in about a year, and I've been kind of Ubering and flying out the shows or um, hiring a tour manager for a run or something. So I'm just trying to see how long I can kind of go without yeah. wheels. yeah. Well, and like you, you mentioned that you had like worked your way out to get down to South Louisiana this week and, yeah, and yeah. like play some shows down yeah, there totally. and you just kind of like plan it out. Well, yeah, well, in Louisiana, I, you know, I'm from here, so I have so many friends from here and so many different uh, family members and I've been touring all over the state here for so long. This is one of my bigger markets to where I have a, a surplus of friends and people that, you know, would be down like yeah yeah you're going to Baton Rouge yeah well I'll, I'll hop in the car yeah <laughs> you know yeah uh, so so like uh, I guess why New York why did you instead of oh, Los going, Angeles well, or? Going, well I go to I go to Los Angeles too I was there for the I was there for the whole month of January of this year okay and so I'd say um, New York Nashville L A and Dallas of all places are four places that I go a lot to write music the most you know those I kind of will circle around those four spots and yeah. Um, then I kind of will tour all in between as well, but I guess those are the four places that I go and spend a lot of time. Uh, as far as touring, are you like, I guess not having your own, well, I guess you said you had a tour manager or whatever. You know, I'll hire like, someone for the day and be yeah. like, you know, the tour manager gig right now is like, I guess my, pick me up in the car, I'm <laughs> throwing my guitar in and then, you know, we'll, we'll get some food before the show and then yeah. we'll settle up and go home. I guess my question is like. Do you just play big cities, or do you get to little small no, places? No, I, I, I well? play little small places. There's one small place that I that I play all the time that in South Louisiana that I go to, uh, Homa, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. It's a small little place. I got like a little bayou, and they just just the friendliest play, people in the world. And they just keep booking. Every time I go there, I play two shows every every day. I go every time I wow. go there, and they have such a great time. And it's a little small little spot, but I'm like, I don't know. I just like these people from South Louisiana. Are just very different than anywhere else you go and so the culture is so unique i just it's just very inspiring to be around different types of folks and yeah no doubt um i guess can you talk about like life in new york city like living there like i know it's got to be a pretty drastic change i would say that uh, my the joke that i make the most about when i go visit new york and uh is that you know if you walk out your door you're gonna probably whether or not you want to or not you'll spend about a hundred dollars just to leave the house because everything's so expensive yeah and so you got to be careful you know you got to go to if you're on new york on a budget you really have to know what you're doing because you can really spend some money up there for sure all of your money yeah <laughs> yeah um i guess can you talk about like home base being nashville and like you got like three things there or yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, Na- a, that's the deal there what's actually funny in nashville um is i have two neighbors who are actually from Ruston, like, that are, like, in my neighborhood. Wow. And so we joke around, and we call it Ruston North. <laughs> yeah. Up in Nashville. We, we want to make Ruston North T-shirts from the, for Nashville. I think that would be hilarious. For sure. Uh, yeah, so Nashville is, like, like, a safe haven for me where I go when I'm not touring and have a ton of friends, so many talented people there that I get to collaborate with and write with and just connect with. You know, that's where I feel like Nashville is, like, I'm sure someone else has said this before. I'm stealing this from someone, but it's like the Hogwarts of like being a songwriter. Like you want to go to learn to be a wizard, you go to Hogwarts. You know, you want to learn to be a songwriter, you go to Nashville. It's like the only place that everyone's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, you write songs. You stay home all day and write songs and drink coffee, and your family thinks you know you're losing your mind. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and so it's very. It's like a great place to go and to have people relate to. You, you know what I mean? I feel like being a songwriter or a traveling songwriter, you can kind of feel unrooted a lot of times or not like but um you can always go back and, and talk to people and they'll be like yeah, yeah i told them i, know, I get it <laughs> you yeah. know i'm going through the same thing right for sure you know? uh so one of the things i do whenever i like you know line up a guest or whatever is, is look you up on the internet oh, and, cool. and uh youtube of course and 
one of the things that caught my attention was like you did Malibu and like Purdue University oh, yeah. in like this hallway where people were just walking around. <laughs> yes, yes, that was that was cool. Can you that tell us fun. a little backstory? Yeah, about that? um, yeah. So I was up in Purdue, uh, Lafayette, Indiana, playing a show, and um, I was kind of giving a tour of the campus. And a friend that was giving me the tour um, is he's a great musician, his own right, and also does videography and photography and so we had like all the gear to do a video and to edit it and he was like dude why don't we do like a video while we're here to promote your song and I was like that'd be great and so we, were, we talked about it while we were walking down that hallway I was like this hallway echoes really nice I bet it would sound good and so um, we, we did like kind of a one take music video and, and people were, were walking down, up and down the hallway like being like what's this dude doing singing yeah. in, in the hall but it was, it was really fun and um I th- I'm really proud of the way it came out. Yeah, it's I'll hard to walk that far and sing and play, and that song is very fast, and the changes are crazy. And, yeah, and it's a, it's not like so the easiest song of mine to play, and so the challenge of like playing it while walking down the hallway was um, it was exciting. Yeah, you got a big change there at the yeah. end that like <laughs> changes that, the whole yeah, yeah. whole song. Uh, but yeah, I like I, I was watching it and I was like, you know, what is this? And then as it progresses, I'm like. Man, they just wing this. They just <laughs> totally. Yeah, they were just like right here, right now. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> so totally. like they didn't ask anybody any yeah, permission. Yeah, or that's anything. exactly what happened. And uh, I think at one point run. someone like skateboard passed me. It was that was hilarious. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's I good can, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a fun video. Um, and you you recorded some stuff in in New York. And had yeah, some of that stuff recorded on video as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. I did I did little some acoustic sessions up there. And, um, what was that? Was that just like your own thing, or was that somebody sought you out? Or I what? met a I met a, a buddy of mine um, who is actually from Dallas, but he lives in New York now, and he has he's a drummer and he has his own studio up there. And actually, uh, um, he he's in a uh, big production called Stomped, where it's like a Broadway music where like they like right. do percussions with like trash cans and like and yeah, they have, like yeah, a yeah. whole show. Mm-hmm. And um, I met him at a party when I was up there one summer, and he was. And then, like, I saw him, like, two weeks later when I was busking on the subway. And he was like, yo, dude, I wish I could jam with you. You're sounding great. <laughs> he was like, if you ever want to come to one of my shows, Stomps, let me know. I'll get you tickets. And so, like, I got to, like, take my mom to come to visit me. And we went to Stomp. And I was like, got these tickets from busking <laughs> on the subway, mom. Check it out. Yeah. And then, uh, then we became, me and that guy became friends. And he just opened up his studio to me. I was like, come use my gear and let's record something for fun. Yeah. And so we just kind of did that just cool. for fun. But. He was a nice dude. He was from Dallas, not far away from Louisiana, where we're from, and so we just became buddies. And yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you brought up another question. Uh, what on earth did your parents say when you were like, "Hey, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm flipping my life"? And yeah, I, my mom, I think, was kind of excited and intrigued. She didn't play any instruments growing up, but she she was she sang a bit. Um, so she has done concerts and sang country songs and has um, was a good singer and. In her own right, and um, but I would grow up, and she'd always try to get me to sing, and I was just kids, and I was always like, "I'm too cool for this." Like, yeah, I don't want to sing. You know, baseball player. Yeah, I don't do that. You know, <laughs> that was probably the worst version of me. But I was like, "I'm not gonna do that." And then uh, she's, I think she's gets, you know, she's really proud and excited, and likes to watch me do it. Yeah. Um, so she's into it. She's cool and super supportive. There's been some times when she's like, "All right, it's time to grow up a bit." Yeah. And, um, get your life together. But I'm like, no, I'm. This my life is together. This is it. This <laughs> yeah. is what I want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's been cool. She's been really supportive, and um, yeah, it's been. She likes coming to the shows. And, yeah, I imagine it's a little easier now that you're all self sufficient. Yeah, you know. And she's. Uh, she likes to come out and hear my songs, and I feel like she's. You know, she loves to hear my new songs, maybe to hear where my headspace is at. And right. I'm, like, I'm always like, don't you know, don't don't judge me by my songs too much, you know. I'm, <laughs> 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 uh, I guess uh, who inspires you? What do any artists inspire you now? Previously, or you know, um, or do you gain some some style? When I first got from? into music, I didn't really, like I said, I didn't listen to music a whole lot, so I, I didn't have like this great encyclopedia of, of music and artists to dive into. And I've kind of always been the guy in my friend group of musicians that are like, this guy doesn't know any musicians. You know, they're like, <laughs> they're they're always like. Um, you know, making fun of me or trying to educate me in musical history and being like, you don't know anything, you know? Yeah. And they're like, I don't even know how you know how to do music because you don't <laughs> know any anybody. Uh, but when I first got into music, I was inspired by a lot of um, Nashville kind of singer-songwriter people that necessarily weren't big at the time, but in the Nashville scene, okay. they were pretty big. And so I was just inspired by 
guys that were starting out doing it. And then th- throughout time, I've, I've started to learn a lot about all the musical greats, you know. Yeah. I'm really into the Beatles now and the Stones and the Beach Boys. And, okay. and it goes on to all you know, all different types of styles of music. For sure. Um, I like the Killers a lot. Yeah. I don't sing karaoke, but if I do sing karaoke, I only sing killer songs. <laughs> the musician doesn't sing karaoke. I don't sing karaoke, but if I do sing karaoke, it's just killer tunes. I think the reason um, I don't... So many singers don't like to sing karaoke is because uh, karaoke is fun. It's a fun thing, to right? Do. Right. And like, uh, it's it's a silly thing to do. Yeah. And then when you go and you and, the, and you're a singer and people might know that you're a singer right. or you're with your friends, you're like, oh, yeah. here, it's like this pressure to be like, here's this performance. Yeah. I can see. And so uh, yeah. it's it, fair. You know, so I, it's, I'm always I would shy away from it, but now I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll go sing, but I exclusively only sing uh, songs that are by the band, The Killers. Gotcha. Which is kind of funny and random and. <laughs> Just me being a little difficult. That's a good. That's a good point, though. Like you know, karaoke is kind of meant to be like a silly thing. Silly, like, fun. Lose. You know, you can't sing, but I just go up there and do it. And, and every, every now and then you got you got your friend that can sing. You're like, oh, they're killing it. But then if you're right. a singer, they're everyone's like, oh, they're like, yeah. Know, it's, it's better to catch people by surprise. And yeah. then if you're up there and the people are like waiting for you to, to do something, and and you're, sure. like, you're like, this isn't in my key. Oh, you know. <laughs> You know, it's, so it can be a little challenging. No doubt. Yeah. Um, Definitely. But it's been fun. The ten karaoke, I've, I've, I'm learning to to let go and take the pressure off and just uh, get weird. For Have sure. Fun. We're For friends. Sure. I had something else, but it escaped. That's okay. It happens. It happens. Um, I guess. Uh, Am I the first musician you've had on your podcast? Yes, first musician. Oh wow! I'm so yes. honored. Um, yeah, had a. Obviously, I'm always trying to to spread out. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I, my favorite podcast is when they have you know different guests of all different stuff. It's like we never know who we're gonna get. You know? Yeah, yeah, so that's fun. What kind of pod? Who do you listen to? Um, so I I was late to the podcast scene. I think we kind of chatted about this when we met, but I um I didn't I wasn't in the podcast. I was like, what a podcast! It's kind of crazy. And then now I love podcasts. They have, like they take me by surprise by how much I have consumed them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Theo Vaughn is a Louisiana uh, pot, uh, comedian who For lives sure. in Los Angeles now. When I was in L.A. for the month of January this past year, I went to the comedy store, and um, he went, went up there. And just because he was from Louisiana, I was like, maybe connected with him a little more. And um, and I started checking out his podcast, and now, like, I watch podcasts. Like, I watch TV shows. I'll, like, we'll binge watch for sure. podcasts. For sure. Um, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of podcasts. Joe Rogan now, I'll watch some of his. You know, he always has, if he has an interesting guest, I'm... You know, I'll hop in there. Even if they're not, not interested, just depends. Yeah, just depends. You know, every, yeah. Everyone has a story, and everyone can be interesting if they're um, not boring. No doubt. <laughs> you know? Well, and it's you know, I think it's it's something that I'm trying to learn. I think that's something that Joe has probably mastered is you know, just like we we didn't we didn't know each other, no. but like we connect. You know, like we like find common ground, and, and like it's, it's almost fun to to see to record the first. Com- this is our first conversation to yeah. really have that's lasted more than five minutes. Yeah, or you know, and so it's for cool sure. to see that on video for the first time and to watch people interact with each other. I think is what I like to see. Uh, my favorite podcasters, like I like to see, oh, see them interact with other comedians or other people, p- other podcast people, and and be like, oh, this is you know, you get to see other sides of people. And, yeah, no doubt. You know, uh, it's something that Joe mentioned one day. It was about, you know, somebody was complimenting on him, how he does his podcast or whatever. And he was like, you know, it just comes from genuine curiosity. And that, that like really struck a nerve with me. Yeah. It's like, that is what I'm like. I just want to learn new perspectives on life. And yeah. I'm just genuinely curious about you and how you live your life. Yeah, the <laughs> curiosity will get you a long way, yeah. <laughs> especially in, in interviews and podcasting for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. What's what? Who's, is Joe Rogan one of your favorites? Yeah, Joe Rogan and uh, a guy named Kyle Thierman. He's Kyle a Thierman. he's a guy out. out in Santa Cruz, California. He's a big environmentalist, and um, he actually just started. He and another guy, uh, I forget the other guy's name, uh, uh, Chris Ryan, Doctor Chris Ryan. They uh, they started an award show, and it is based on it's it's a satire award show giving awards to companies who have fucked Mother Earth. Mm. So it is called the Motherfucker Awards. 
Hilarious. And he gets comedians to come up and accept awards for, you know, Chase Bank for funding Tar Sands and stuff like that. That is wild. Yeah, yeah. It's really, you know, it's a really interesting take on the, the climate fight yeah. or whatever, Absolutely. however you want to put it. It's very eye opening. It yeah. Like. And it's like, he did it last year. And, you know, a lot of, uh, I think the way a lot of things go viral is, you know, through Instagram or, you know, little one minute clips Close of stuff. Too. Um, you watch that one minute clip and then you're hooked and you'll watch hours of the right. second. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the whole thing with, with podcasts and, and Theo and Joe and all yeah. those guys do it. You know, they put a little clip of it on Instagram and you're like, all right, I need to go listen My to My favorite thing. thing that they do, and I think Joe Rogan and Theo both do this, is they, um, they'll take, they'll get little like cartoon clips of their conversations. Yes. That and stuff I think that is hilarious. Is amazing. That's just gold. That is gold. It's so easy to watch. It's hilarious. And they just take like some little random funny antidote of their conversation and turn it into like an animated story. I think yeah. that is. Yeah, but I, he's Kyle starting to to get some traction doing that. He's about to do this motherfucker awards for the second year in a row, and uh, he's really into like uh, psychedelic drugs and and like uh, for health benefits and like uh, MDMA for PTSD and. Uh, really exploring that realm of, of and uh, he's out in uh, California. Yeah. He, he they're, lives they're in, definitely in Santa Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he, but he's getting all these doctors and, you know, really people that are really similar. No, I've heard, yeah, that, that's it. definitely a, the conversation right now. Yeah. You know, that's definitely the conversation yeah. about, around mental health is, you know, that. Yeah. So I don't really know. I don't really necessarily want to, throw out my opinion on it all. So, I yeah, so, I don't want <laughs> but um, I have to have, it, have an it, opinion about it before I can throw it out. For sure. And you know, it it's it's interesting. It's I I guess, you know, just like everybody else, you just want to see results yeah. uh, and positive results and I yeah, um, just want to see healthy people, really. Right, exactly. Yeah. How do you stay level-headed on the road? I mean, I'm sure It's it crazy. I have like sometimes. I'm a in a world of text messaging, I'm I I I'm still a phone call guy. Yeah. You know, and still like I mean, People will be confused, be like, Grant's calling me. Something must be wrong. I was like, no, I just like to chat, you know? Yeah. No one talks anymore on the phone, I feel like. So I will, uh, lo- long drives and long conversations on the phone, you know, I catch up with friends. And um, but when you're touring, everything is changing every day. Right. You know, so you're in a new place every day or you're here, you're there. And so it's nice to have little consistencies in your life, whether it's like, I watch this same show every night before I go to bed or I listen to this podcast or I have this, I talk to these friends or, and so it's good to have just some consistencies on the road or you can kind of, you know, feel like you're a little bit of a new person in every time you go. Right. I get, I was so something that I've been figuring out here recently and, and maybe struggling with some, some degree is like, so you, much like me recently, you are your own boss, basically. Yeah, like, and if you don't set up work, you don't have work. Yeah, <laughs> so like, how do you how do you stay motivated to, uh, to one like... Of, one of the cha- most challenging things for me with touring is, um, is I can, I'll book a tour, I'll go out for a month or a month and a half, or I've gone out for, you know, long periods before, and then uh, if you're not setting up the next thing, when you get home from that, you don't have anything. Right. <laughs> you know, right. So like staying constantly booking the next thing while living in the moment of the current thing is challenging, especially when you're traveling so much. But you kind of have to be dedicated. And I have to put so many hours into, you know, office work, and whether it's just at a coffee shop during the day or on the drive, you know, just you have to start thinking and planning out your next moves or you won't move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. You know what I mean? So you mentioned that you wanted to get into more writing or you had been getting into more yeah. writing. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, can you talk? Uh, obviously, that's a different process maybe yeah. every time, or is it the it's, same it's process? It's kind of like, you know, uh, f- luck, like I've been really lucky to get into some rooms with other artists and get to write with them. The easiest way to get a song recorded by another artist that you wrote is if you write it with them, you know? And, um, and so luckily, I've uh, just uh, touring and working in music for the past decade I've made a lot of friends and been uh really honored to be able to ask for different projects and um and I'm and right now I'm, I, mean, I have a lot of songs that you know maybe or maybe not come out by other people so we'll see but I, I'm excited about all the new songs I've written with other people and I'm expecting a lot to come out and I'm kind of excited about that and I'm still doing it all the time as many you know I'm I'm trying to write for I want to like 
you know, write all the songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Know? That's good to hear that you have that kind of motivation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it a different feeling, like, hearing your songs compared to, like, hearing a song that you wrote that someone else is singing? Um, you see what I'm asking? Yeah, it's, it's, it can be. Um, a lot of my songs that I put out um, or uh, about to put out are all very kind of specific stories to my life. or And so they're a little bit more like, my kind of babies if you will like my like yeah. my stories mm-hmm. and my thing and so that, that's always going to feel a little more personal to me but i love helping somebody tell their story and um you know yeah, I, lo- I, I love if you're i love co-writing you're kind of sharing that experience sure, so sitting around talking about life and yeah like, let's figure out how to put this in a song you know but I, i'm always so uh think it's so cool when i write a song with with someone and, and it you know if it has any success or people you know um go to a show and listen to other people kind of sing that back. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like yeah. going to it, watch your friend and sing the songs, uh, sing, sing, go to their show and they might play the song that y'all wrote. Um, and then they hear people be like, Oh yeah, this is my song. You know, that's <laughs> always really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine so. Yeah. Uh, I know you've opened up for some, from some bigger yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, who have you opened up for? Um, I've opened up for one of my favorite singers is from Louisiana, uh, Mark Broussard. For sure. Have you heard of Mark? Oh, yeah. His voice is from another world. Oh, and I was a big fan of his before I, I ever got to meet him or open up for him. And um, and luckily, over the past couple of years, I've got to open up and then run into him on the road and become friends. And um, he's, you know, he'll always be like a hero of mine. His voice is just timeless to me yeah you know it's and very, so mark broussard from from karen crow louisiana yeah. he's he's one of my heroes that i've gotten to meet and open up for and then um another friend of mine uh sam hunt i'm over for sam hunt kind of a bigger country I've pop heard artist of um i've got to tour with him a bit and that's that was you know those are probably some of the bigger shows i've done those were really fun yeah uh, that that's what i was about to ask yeah. like i mean that sounds like a bigger tour yeah that was, was cool that? yeah well, i went opened up for him th- while he was touring through louisiana and um we had a good time oh yes yes <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah i got some big stadiums or oh they were um this was when he had his first, like, number one on the radio, so he, he was just kind of breaking through, and we were, were playing, like, you know, uh, probably a couple thousand people rooms, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's – is that a – does there get nervous energy there? Or? You know, I almost get nervous to play in front of smaller crowds. You know, to go play f- for a crowd of, like, 2,000 people that are, like – so they're so jazzed to be there that right. there's, there's, you know, they're packed in and they're yeah. ready for it, you yeah. know. Versus, well, and they're not there to see you. So as long as you don't yeah. screw up, yeah, too as long bad. As we, you know, I feel very confident that you know, you know, that maybe I can win them over. Or, right. And as an opener, you're on for so long. As long as you don't overstay, you know, so you come out, have fun, yeah. play a couple, play the songs, and get off. It's a good experience. But um, it's just fun to hear to play the shows for people that are excited about music and want to hear some songs but to go play shows we're kind of building audiences and sometimes you go to a place and you're playing to like you know 10 people and you're like oh right my gosh, this is hard to make this feel like a show yeah. almost the smaller the show the harder it is the more um i don't know maybe the more co- questions you're having about should i be doing this <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but yeah. the bigger the show the more it feels like one person the right. crowd feels like one big person, yeah. and y'all are having uh, an experience together. Whereas a smaller room, you it's can like, see the emotion on everybody's faces. Yeah, and yeah, that, and you can yeah. see when someone's going to use the restroom or someone's <laughs> checking their phone. Um, you know, um, so smaller crowds, I feel like I get a little more nervous or a little more insecure about like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. But the bigger shows are like, this is my doom. Um, this is why I'm doing it. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you describe like the energy of your show? Is it is it hyped is it, is it uh, a lot of the acoustic key? shows i'm doing are um are like really kind of like quiet listening room vibes to where i'm like telling stories in between songs and um you know and trying to get a few laps in between too um so that's kind of more like i'm kind of traveling around like my headlining shows that i'm playing right now are traveling around the country playing to groups of you know maybe 30 to 50 people in a size appropriate room and um you know, and trying to take that group of 30, 50 to 100 to 300 to whatever. And so I'm just kind of traveling around making little markets around the country and trying to bring it up. Yeah. It's that, do you, are you struggling? Do you see yourself struggling? Uh, well, you know, just uh, struggling is, I mean, always different moments of struggle. But right. I would say that, 
you know, I'm going in the new markets all the time, so trying to build a new market. So new markets, there's less people, mm-hmm. you know, but the ones you go back to, you know, it grows. And so it's, it's more just like you know what to expect. You know when you go to a new market for the first time, maybe there's 10 or 15 people that have heard of you. And then you, you try to win them over, and you come back three months later, and then you got 30 people and try to grow it like that. And that can be, you know, stressful if it's not growing as fast as you would like it to. But it, just like anything else, I feel like if you keep going back, um, you will build your community in that market, yeah, and and you know, and that you'll find your peeps. So you t- you mentioned your style, like, do you? It's very like singer songwriter acoustic right. vibes. Right, I now. almost feel like you could like set up in a coffee shop in the corner and totally, and play. totally, like, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I've done. I, that's a great way to play in a new city is to find a coffee shop to play in. I was about to say, I just feel like that's like an incredible way to like insert yourself where literally yeah. no one knows you. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm down to play coffee shops or open mics or backyards or like, you right, know, right. house shows or, or anything, you know. So I, I just, my goal is just to play um, for anyone that I can and try to like just gather as much steam and as much, um, I just want to like continue growing uh, fan base, no matter how big or small, you know. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to wrap. Yeah, it up right there. absolutely, dude. Dan, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Um, you want to tell people where, where you're at, social media, all that yes. kind of stuff. You can find me on Instagram at Grant Terry Music. Well, at Grant Terry Music. I think Twitter is also uh, Grant Terry Music. I'm on Facebook, just Grant Terry. Um, come say hello and I'm on Spotify and anywhere you stream music you can just search uh, Grant Terrian and some songs will pop up for sure so. I know you got a couple dates in South Louisiana yeah this and weekend and maybe this podcast may come out after that oh that's okay <laughs> that's alright I am that lined up I have um, this is kind of the last little weekend of shows of this year yeah and uh, I will be hitting it hard in 2020 so be on the lookout so new music and, and I can't and say exactly shows. when but expect new music in 2020 we'll even say early 2020 All but right. I can't give too much away outside of that right now sweet I don't want to make any promises I can't keep but hopefully very yeah. soon yeah yeah well we'll be looking forward to that and yeah, uh, I hope we can catch up with you down the road yeah, sometime dude. thank you so much brother Had for sure time. thank absolutely. you absolutely